Host panel, the host of both America at Night and This is America, Rich Valdez. And also joining us is the host of the Andrea K Show, Andrea K. And of course, we have our <laughs> special guest, distinguished Turo uh, University, <laughs> distinguished professor at Turo University. Gosh, I've said it about 15 <laughs> times today. I don't know why on the last segment I can't get it right. Thane <laughs> Rosenbaum. Okay, panel, great to have you with us. Uh, Rich, I want to kick it off with you. Um, Talk to me a little bit about your thoughts on the L.A. Dodgers honoring this particular group. So, Kilmeny, I think that the Dodgers are getting uh, everything that they deserve. I think it's kind of crazy for them to say that we're going to give the Community Hero of the Week or Month uh, award, not because they're drag queens or because they're homosexual or whatever and what have you, but because they were there mocking the Christian faith, Catholics in particular. And I think this is, um, it's in very bad form. It's in very bad taste. So whatever they got with these thousands of people protesting, they had coming to them. And I think Catholics all across the area there in California spoke up and they were heard. And Andrea, originally this group had been disinvited after the Dodgers had faced some pressure from Christian organizations and others, but then the Dodgers actually caved under backlash and invited them back. Uh, what do you think motivated that? Well, a lot of things, uh, pressure from the left, uh, pressure from ESG scores, everybody, you know, worried about, uh, you know, ultimately their, their bottom line and trying to please everybody. So what they ended up doing was they brought this group in about four and a half hours before the actual game. So their, their, their strategy was amid the backlash was to try to please everybody, to bring them in four and a half hours before the game when basically nobody was there, but they still got booed because this should be an affront to the entire nation, whether you're Catholic or Christian. This is an absolutely disgusting display of hate towards America. We were founded on Judeo-Christian principles and values. And, and I hate to play the game of whataboutism, but can we all agree that if this was the Muslim imams for perpetual indulgence, that this would have never happened? Nobody disputes some, somebody having Pride Night, LBGT Pride Night at a sporting event, but this was way too far. And there were thousands of thousands of protesters, Catholic or not, outside. Mm. Thane, I, I want to get your thoughts on big picture here, because we've seen this trend in corporations um, that are taking a particular stance and they're getting backlash for it. Kilmeny, <clears throat> talk about not knowing your audience. This has happened repeatedly, right? Simon & Schuster, Hachette, uh, Anheuser-Busch, Target. <clears throat> I'm not sure who they think their audience is. Is it Twitter? Is it young people that just graduated college that work for the Los Angeles Dodgers? Do they not know what baseball fans come to baseball games for? It seems as if this virtue signaling keeps getting in the way of really just the American experience. To think about that at a baseball game, that it had been hijacked by a, a group honoring a group that really would offend so many Americans. And the question is why? There's certainly a way to honor Pride Month without this. This just seems extreme, but it does seem that it's being driven by the same impulses that you see at college, right? To impress each other with a kind of moral narcissism. Look at us. We will include anyone. Mm. We believe in a diversity so much we don't care. Anything is acceptable, especially if you're fighting for social justice. And Rich, we just saw this explode um, at, at the White House again, uh, not too recently, of course, uh, c condemning the, uh, the, the activist that had um, really, I mean, made an inappropriate, as you can see right there, display in front of the White House, uh, the People's House, but of course, uh, Capitol Hill's People's House. But talk to me a little bit about how, how we're seeing this across every sector of society, because I like what Andrea and Thane have touched on about celebrating Pride Month or, or you know, it, talking about diversity and inclusion, but doing it in a way where it doesn't offend other groups. Um, and it, so I want you to expand on that. Yeah, well, I, I would say, you know, forget about offending other groups. This this particular situation, this is just over the top crazy, right? If you're going to you get invited to the White House, I've been to parties at the Ellipse there before. And, you know, it, there, there's a degree of pomp and circumstance, I think, that goes with going to the White House. You're not going to show up in a pair of Yeezys and jeans like I might go somewhere else. 
uh, even to Newsmax, right? <laughs> it's acceptable right. there, but I don't think you go you go to the White House dressed that way. I would never think of taking off my shirt in the ellipse at the White House, but that's exactly what happened. It was disrespectful. It was in bad taste. The White House banned them from coming back, and then they apologized with a uh, sorry, not sorry. And then that sorry, not sorry didn't go too well, so she had to issue another uh, apology, this time with real contrition, uh, Rose Montoya. And, and good for them for doing that, because what they did was wrong. And I think the people that criticized them saying that they set back the clock for so many that were fighting for LGBTQ rights, I think they're right. It, you, know, you can have an LGBTQ party at the White House, but you don't have to take your shirt off. Yeah. Well, Rich Valdez, Andrea Kay, and of course, our special guest, Thane Rosenbaum, we appreciate you being here. Thank you, panel.